welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. Today I am going to show you how to make this triangle bag. It's actually made with triangle pieces of fabric made from a rectangle. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to make this in any size that you like. So it's really, really simple. Basically all you need is uh, 17 inches of fabric that way and 15 inches that way. If you want to make it smaller, say 10 inches this way, make it eight inches high. So you want a height to weight, height to width ratio of about two inches. It's the easiest way to work it out without actually uh, making your workout formulas. So this is a really, really simple fabric, rectangle turned into triangles, and then put back together to make a nice little shoulder bag like that. And this is a smaller version of the bag as well. So you can see this is wide, it's really low at the bottom. If you want to have this higher at the center there, bring the bag pieces together. You'll know what I'm talking about when you see this put together. So if you bring the fabric pieces together, the triangles, you can actually have this a little bit higher. But you can make this bag in any size you like. Stick around. I'm also going to make this with two different stabilizers as well. So same bag, two different stabilizers, and they really just sit a little bit differently. This one's got normal dressmaker's interfacing inside, so it's just really lightweight and floppy. This one has a little bit more structure to it because it's got a medium or a lightweight pallet on the inside of this one. Now, this piece of fabric is six inches wide by four and a half inches, and I've got some pallet or stabilizer fused to the back of it. On the short edges, we just want to fold the edge in half an inch and stitch it down, and we'll do the same on the other side. I'll repeat that for the other side, fold it in about half an inch. I've just done two rows of stitching and what we're going to do now is fold this in half and stitch that close. Once you've stitched that closed and made yourself a little tube, turn it the right way around. And then just press the seams, finger press the seams to one side. And this is going to be the top of our bags. Now I'll be using two different types of stabilizers for these bags. And I'll also be making two different sizes. This piece of fabric is 23 and a half inches by about 27 inches wide. And it only has a lightweight fusible dressmakers interfacing on the insides. You can see it's quite a light fabric. With this particular piece here, it's going to be much smaller and I've got my lining piece and my lightweight pallet fused onto the inside of this one. So this one's going to have a little bit more stability to it. The instructions are going to be exactly the same though. Once you've got your stabilizer fused to the back of your main piece of fabric, fold your fabric in half so you've got the wider section coming together. Just mark a pin in the center of your fabric at top and bottom. Open it out. I've marked a line straight down the center of my fabric. Now this isn't going to be a problem because this will be a seam after. And we've got the widest part across here with the line down the center. Get your lining piece and place that face down and then your main piece faced up. Pin them together so they don't shift. With your fabric all lined up nicely, we're going to draw a diagonal line. So we've got the center here. We're going to draw a diagonal line from the bottom up to the point at the top here. From the center line to the point on the outside, we've got a diagonal line going across there. We'll do exactly the same for this side here. So we've got the center here. We're going to go up to the outside point on the opposite side. What you have now is your center line with a V going up on either side of your fabric. Reposition your pins if they're in the way and we can cut this fabric straight up the center now. So we'll cut through all the layers straight up the center and separate your pieces. Turn these upside down and the diagonal line that you've got on the front, repeat that on your lining piece. And we'll do the same for the other one. So we've got the diagonal line going straight down there along there, which is the same line on both sides. We'll repeat that for the other piece of fabric. The reason that we're doing this on both back and front is because we're going to be cutting this fabric and there's going to be a lot of stretch on the diagonal part of the fabric. Before we cut any further, we're going to just stabilize our fabric a little bit more on the diagonal edges of all the pieces. So we've got our main body and we've got our lining piece and we've got that again on the other side. 
Take this to the machine and all you want to do is stitch close to the cut edge, about an eighth of an inch. And you'll do that on either side of the fabric. And we'll repeat that for the main bag pieces as well as the other lining piece. Now I'm not stitching on the drawn line, I'm stitching one eighth of an inch on either side of the drawn line. And that's just going to prevent the fabric from stretching out of shape. And come back and do the other side of the line. And I will repeat that for all four pieces. Now that we've just done a stay stitch on either side of our diagonal line, I'm just going to explain to you the difference between doing that and not doing it. I have just a scrap piece of fabric here and I've stitched down on one side of the centre but not on the other side. If I cut this fabric on the diagonal, you've got your bias edges just there. When you stay stitch your fabric, you're going to prevent it from stretching out of the shape when you're pinning or sewing it together. If you don't do that, you can see how much stretch there is there. And so the stitches in your fabric will prevent any excess stretching of your fabric. So over time, this piece here, if you stretch it too much when you're sewing, is going to end up being quite a bit longer than the other side. So you can see there how much longer it is. And that's because we've distorted it when we've been, you know, tugging at it. And most of us sewers will do that unwittingly. So stay stitch your fabric if you're working on a bias. Okay, we can cut this in half now. Take all four pieces of your fabric, cut them all on the diagonal in between the stitching lines. So I've got my lining piece here, and we're just going to cut that in half on the drawn line that I did earlier and separate your fabric. We'll do that for all of them now. With our bias or diagonal edge secured, we're now going to fold this over a quarter of an inch, or just about six mil. So just find your quarter inch measure on your ruler and then we can fold this over and press it. So once that is folded and pressed all the way down the diagonal edge, we can set this aside and we'll do the same for the other main pieces and also the lining pieces. So all the diagonal pieces, fold them over and press them a quarter of an inch. Once you've folded up the quarter inch hem on the diagonal of all of your pieces, we're going to take our main fabric. This is the folded edge here. We want the shorter straight side at the bottom. This will be the left side of our bag. Grab the opposing piece. So we've gotten another long edge there with the folded edge, a long straight edge and a short edge. And this is how our bag is going to look. Now, when we do the bag, we've got to determine what size our box corner is going to be. So depending on the size of the bag that you're making, you're going to want to have different size boxes. If we're having a two inch boxed corner, which will end up giving us four inches on the bottom. We've got two inches, then we want to come out an extra inch. So that is where I will place the corner part of this bag. So whatever size bag you want, you determine what size box corners you're having and then move the edge of your fabric one inch over. So because I'm using the 13 inch base at the bottom here, I've got two inches marked for my box corner, I'm going to add an inch. So that just means it's three inches away. This point here will sit three inches from the outside edge of my fabric. Line that up along the bottom and if we have a look at the other side where the corner ends, where the point ends, you'll see that that is three inches from the outside edge. So we've pinned the base and our edges are folded under. Pin the intersection there so that it doesn't shift. We're going to do a 1 8 inch top stitch right down to the corner and we're going to do the same just here. When we do that start about a quarter of an inch from that point at the top there so we don't want to start right at the very intersection we want to come down about a quarter of an inch and the reason we're doing that is because when we join our bag pieces together later on we just want to have a little bit of room there to be able to insert the lining. To start a quarter of an inch from the intersection, stitch a 1 8 inch top stitch down here and we'll do a top stitch down here as well. If you're going to find it difficult to find the area that you need to stitch down here, just grab your ruler and grab some chalk, something that's not going to leave a mark on your fabric and you can mark a, 
a light line following on from the angle of your diagonal there down to the end. So I've chalk marked a line just here. I'm not actually going to stitch on that line. I'm going to stitch an eighth of an inch inside the lines. It's a copy of the top stitch that we're doing down this side here. I'll go and do this for the other bag piece and we'll do the same for the lining pieces as well. Place the open edge underneath your machine and we're just going to do a 1 8 inch top stitch along the edge but we're stopping a quarter of an inch before that intersection. And the best way to do that is just to open out that fold and we're just going to stitch up to the fold. Then we can turn our work, raise your foot and this is the edge of my fabric underneath and I'm just going to stitch 1 8 of an inch on the inside. I've got one here that I've already sewn together to show you where your seam was open on this side we've top stitched down we've come to a quarter of an inch at that seam intersection and that will enable us to uh, get the lining in easier so keep it open underneath and then continue to stitch down so you can see that on this side that fold is still there it's been stitched down whilst the fold is open so that's what we're going to do when we're stitching this down now that we've sewn all our pieces together take your main bag pieces and place them right side together line them up at the bottom and this fold that we had open earlier when we were sewing place that back down again pin or clip it in place at the bottom when you've clipped the bottom edge down we'll do the same for the long edge on the side and we'll do that all the way up to the point and when you do that just open out the folded edges just here so we'll pin or clip it in place and leave the folded edges just at the very tip open for the time being and we'll repeat this for both sides of the bag and also for the lining pieces as well then what we'll have is the bag just open in the center here once you've pinned the sides and the base of your bag pieces together with the lining just leave a section open at the bottom so you will have double layers here because of the overlap on the triangles but we'll leave this section open for turning through later on. I'm going to start from the base and stitch all of that down before I actually do the long edges. Back stitch at the beginning and the end. And when you've done the bottom edge, we can come up and do the sides. When you get to the tip at the top, just make sure that your folded edges are open. And we'll repeat to the other side. Now that our main bag is closed, we'll do exactly the same for our lining piece. Now remember with the lining piece we're going to leave the centre open. So start from the side here, back stitch, and stitch to the end and we can turn around and come straight up. As we did with the main bag we'll leave the folded edge open and stitch to the end. Repeat for the other side, remembering to leave that opening there. Now that we've stitched the bag up all the way around on the sides and the bottom, we can box our corners. I'm doing a two inch boxed corner on these bags. Now the boxed corner can be any size you like. So I've got two inches from the outside edge, two inches from the bottom edge. I'll do that for both sides and then I'll turn it around and do the same on the other side. Now, I was asked recently in a video why I actually mark both sides. The reason I do that is so that I can actually see a straight line when I actually pinch this out, which I'll show you in a minute. Normally, when I'm sewing my bags, I don't even bother drawing them. I just use a guide on my machine, but that's because I've done so many of these boxes that I can usually sight them pretty well. The reason I'm going to this much trouble as well is because a lot of you might be learning how to do something and not familiar with it. So it's easier to show you how to do this and then you can develop your way later. So we'll pinch the corners together. When I pinch that out, you can see that the corners match up on the sides there and you've got a nice straight line. And that will enable me to have a nice square boxed corner. 
and you can see that on the other side. So once you develop the technique, you, you can do your full lines or not put any lines at all. It's up to yourself. So I'm going to repeat this for the other corner and also for my lining pieces. And then we'll take that to the machine and stitch straight across. Open the corner out and start stitching at one corner and finish at the end. I do like to double stitch over my seam intersections. And we'll repeat that for the other side as well as the lining. Once you've done the boxing of your bag, so trim off these little ears about a quarter of an inch from the edge on the main and on the lining. What we need to do now is take our lining piece and turn that right side out and we're going to place that inside our bag. Once you've placed your lining inside the main bag, line up all the edges and line up the side seams that you've got here and we can pin this together. Now I've got this seam on my lining over to my left and I've got the seam on my main bag pushed over to the right that just to helps distribute the bulk. We'll pin that all the way around and we'll end up sewing all of this down. Remember when I said to you at the beginning that it's important to stay stitch. As you're going along and clipping your edges together we want to line everything up nicely but as we're doing that we have a tendency to stretch our fabric and that's why it was so important just to do a stay stitch on that bias edge earlier it's just so that we could help prevent everything from stretching out of shape so this whole bag has been clipped together all the way around and where we have our intersecting point at the bottom there on the back and front of the bag we're just going to leave that open so we're going to stitch from the top or you can stitch from here but we're going to stitch all the way along and we're going to stitch up to about an inch or half an inch from that intersecting point we're not going to stitch through there we'll leave that open and it'll be easier to stitch this closed when we do the top stitching later so we'll stitch up to about half an inch to an inch from the intersecting point stitch all the way back up from the other side and come down and do the other one as well so it's up to you whether you start at the top and work your way down or if you want to start at the center here start here come all the way up and then you can come all the way down to the center there and then do the same on the other side we'll take this to the machine so i'm starting where the bag intersects just start where it's comfortable for you we want our quarter of an inch seam and that fold that we did earlier this is our seam allowance When we get to the top we have our seams in opposing directions. I've got my lining on the left side and the main fabric on my right. Come back down and continue on. It's actually not critical how the top will look because that's all going to be hidden when we do our little um, covering for the handle. Okay, so I've stitched it all the way around and left an opening just at the intersection there. And we'll repeat for the other handle. And there's our other little opening. Once you've stitched the bag closed all the way around and ignored that little opening at the intersecting points, we can just trim our points at the very top here. It doesn't have to be pretty this is all going to be hidden shortly so we can just trim that off just past where you've finished stitching just to reduce some of the bulk in your fabric bring these points through as well and make sure you poke them out poke out the corners of your boxing and you can just take a pair of scissors and use the tip of the scissors to poke the corner out so I've just got the tip of my scissors and I'll gently poke out the top of my handle now remember that opening just here that we left on the intersection we're going to top stitch the edges now so take this to the machine and top stitch and when you get to that intersection the fabric has already been pressed underneath and we can just go and top stitch this section down I've just put a couple of clips in place to hold the lining in underneath when we top stitch we're going to come down and do a narrow 1 8 inch top stitch that's going to close up that opening there 
and continue on and secure everything down. So you won't have to worry about trying to get any holes from the other side of the fabric all lined up. Go and top stitch all the way up to the point, straight down and right around the whole bag. Remember when we stitched the piece, triangle pieces down and we did a top stitch there? What we're doing is an extension of that to do the top stitching. So you can start back a couple of stitches there and then continue on and just make sure that your lining fabric is underneath and your main is at the top. And because we pressed this earlier, it'll, it'll actually be a lot easier to sew. Now that we've finished the top stitching the bag, you can just take the opening at the bottom, pinch the edges and close it up. With everything finished on our bag, we just have these points at the top to put together so that we can actually carry it over our shoulder. What we're going to do is grab the tube that we made earlier and we've got the seam here and we want that on the underside of our bag. Feed the tube through, so just pinch this together, feed that through until it comes out the other side. So I've got the opposite end of this through the tube. So just push that through and tuck it out of the way. We can take this to the machine and we'll just stitch this closed. So just stitch a square shape around or go back stitch a few times and stitch that closed. So you just want to overlap it about an inch. So I've gone and taken that to the machine and stitched it down. So I've just stitched all the way around and you can see that on the underside there and that's just going to hold that nice and taut. Grab your tube and slide that across to the centre and the seam that we've got here, we just want to turn that so that it sits underneath the bag. And turn your fabric around and your handle, just spread it out nicely. Have your seam sitting underneath. You can line it up with the seam of the lining if you want to. And so that it doesn't shift, you can hand baste this if you want to. You can stitch straight across, whatever you like, or you can just leave it as is. I'm going to just move this slightly out of the way and stitch onto the handle here which will actually stitch to the underside. So I'll just move that handle slightly out of the way there and do the same on the other side. Just move it out of the way a little bit and then that way you won't see any stitching on the top but it'll be secure underneath. So just open out the handle underneath there. Keep the bottom part of the handle sitting underneath. Put it under your machine and move the top section out of the way. And you only want to do a couple of stitches. So just a back stitch is all you need to do. And that has secured the bottom part of the handle to your bag and it's left it open at the top so that it just looks a bit, little bit nicer. We'll repeat for the other side. That's it, our bag is completely finished. There you go, a really simple triangle bag just made out of two rectangular pieces of fabric. So it's pretty simple. I hope you've enjoyed this project and I shall catch you next time. Bye for now.